O Lord without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. There is a mock war between the young boys and the old men of Greentown. There's the young Doug, the self-appointed ringleader of the boys, who directs the mischief and pranks against the old men. Then there's the ancient Calvin, the very elderly president of the school board, who leads his fellow old men in trying to outwit the boys, attempting to teach them a lesson or two. The two enemies couldn't be more at odds. And this particular summer, the feuding has come to a head. Young Doug turns 14, grasping that there's so much more to life and so much ahead of him, while Calvin's old age is finally encumbering him and after the death of his oldest friend, realizes the end is closer than ever. But after multiple battles, some victorious for the young boys and others for the old men, the elderly Calvin has a revelation. Instead of combating with the boys, through a generous act, through an act of kindness, he'll teach them a lesson. So Calvin hosts a birthday party for a young girl, inviting the entire neighborhood along with Doug. And when it comes time to cut the cake, a miracle happens. Instead of Doug stereotypically hoarding a slice or two for himself, he offers a piece of cake to old Calvin. Calvin is stunned in utter disbelief as to what just happened. He later recounts this moment to a friend. In the boy's face, Calvin touched his mouth with his hands to pull the words out. He had seen himself peer forth from the boy's eyes, as if from an opened door. How did I get in there? How? He had seen himself peer forth from the boy's eyes, as if from an opened door. A miracle of mutual recognition. A moment where all the obstacles, all the differences just fell away. A moment of acknowledgement that the humanity of one sees the humanity of the other. This scene, this moment, is a scene from Ray Bradbury's book, Farewell Summer. Perhaps best known as a coming-of-age novel, Bradbury also presents the concept of mutual recognition as a balm to the harm caused from those fighting and struggling over power. Bradbury noticed that the world declares that in order to make progress, to get ahead in life, in order to become the most powerful, the goal must be to show no mercy, to charge ahead without consideration, and eliminate the enemy. But what Bradbury believed was that those things caused more chaos. And what the world actually needs is mutual recognition to make progress. A world in which power is not determined by domination, but true power is found in sharing compassion, understanding, and grace. This is also the same truth, the same truth that the world that Jesus is trying to reveal to the disciples in today's gospel. The disciples once again have misunderstood who Jesus is and the purpose he will fulfill. Jesus has tried to explain that again 
His kingdom, his power, and his glory are not of this world. The way in which Jesus will save the world, redeem the world, will not be through traditional means. Yet the disciples continue to think otherwise. When James and John ask about being Jesus' right and left hand, they assume that Jesus will conquer the way that other rulers, other tyrants, have done. And after taking his power, he'll make his disciples, his followers, his governing court. But Jesus instructs differently once again. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. To our ears today, this may sound really cliche. We've heard it before. And yet, this is a radical approach towards the world. Jesus is explaining that greatness only comes when one human recognizes the inherent humanity of another. Regardless of who the person is, regardless of how they've been perceived in the culture, regardless of the role they're supposed to play, Jesus is saying, No one is overlooked. Everyone is worthy. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of God is not brought about through domination, but through the power of mutual recognition. Which means it's not about earning your place at the table. It's not about following the rules obediently. It's not about associating with influential people or perfectly posturing for a position. Jesus is flipping all of that on its head to demonstrate that God's kingdom is centered on mercy, compassion, and love. It's through Christ's work on the cross that the world has been freed from the obstacles and differences that separate each other. And through his death, the world gains a new way to see humanity within another person we meet. By grace, not only are we capable of mutual recognition, but truly seeing Christ, truly seeing Christ within each and every single person we meet. Because God shared this love with us, first, seeing our worthiness despite what the world sees. Because God loved us first, we are enabled to share this love with others. All of this, all of this giving a glimpse of God's hope, the hope that the world may see the face of Christ in each and every person we meet, and that everyone we meet sees the face of Christ in us. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.